Welcome back, my name is Kerry, and today I'm gonna to tell you three reasons why single wides are better than tiny homes. As home prices continue to rise and more people start to seek out affordable options, some people are going to look at homes with a smaller footprint. In this segment, there are a lot to choose from. There's single wides, ADUs, park models, and tiny homes, but today we're comparing the tiny to the single. Don't get me wrong, this video isn't to throw shade at the tinies. Tiny homes are great. My cousins built and lived in a tiny home. I love the lofts in the tiny homes and I'm even a fan of Mr. Tiny. I'm well aware that significantly more people on YouTube are interested in tiny homes than manufactured homes and this video might ruffle a few feathers but that's showbiz baby. There are people out there right now considering a tiny home who might be better off in a single wide who don't even know it but sometimes single wides just make more logical sense. At the end of the day, the perfect home is going to be different for everyone because everyone's situation is completely different. What I'm going to do is tell you the difference between tinies and singles, a few of the benefits that I think make singles stand out, and hopefully it'll help you decide which option is the best for you. So let's do it. A tiny home isn't just a tiny home, it's a tiny home. I think that made sense. They're a classification of homes that are built on a frame and technically a recreational vehicle, which is great because they can easily be towed from place to place or stay put. There seems to be a couple different schools of thought on what the upper limit is to actually make it a tiny home. Some people think it's 400 square feet, but for the purposes of this video, I'm talking about the ones that are eight and a half feet wide and can be towed without any special permits in and around the 200 square foot range and we'll leave the park model style tiny homes for another day. What I love about the tiny homes is the ingenuity. They're working with such a small amount of space that they're finding brilliant ways to fit everything in and it results in some very cool designs. So what's the big benefit of a tiny home? According to the tiny life there are huge financial benefits to living in a tiny home because not only are they a fraction of the size of a traditional home but they can also be a fraction of the cost. The tiny house movement is based around living with less to actually live more as opposed to working hard to afford a bigger house and then working even more to fill that house with stuff. I agree with that. It's so easy to get caught up in stuff and at the end of the day, there are very few units of stuff that actually matter. A single wide is a manufactured home also built on a frame but definitely isn't as mobile as the tiny. When they're delivered the wheels and hitch are removed and if you want to move it again it involves hiring a manufactured home transport company and a setup crew and it becomes a whole song and dance. They're built entirely in a factory. In Canada they meet the Z240 code while in the states they meet the HUD code. Most single wides are bigger but they can be built as small as 320 square feet so they could be a direct competitor with the tiny. If you're looking for a home with a small footprint, here are three reasons why a small single wide might be better than a tiny home. The first benefit of the single wide is there's more options on where to put them. One thing that limits the tiny home as a permanent residence is the fact that they're classed as an RV, which means they're typically only allowed for temporary housing. Unfortunately, they do not qualify as permanent dwellings and that can make it difficult to find somewhere to put it outside of an RV resort, campsite, backyard, or driveway. A single wide, on the other hand, is meant to be lived in year round and there are some really great options on where you can put them. One of the most popular options is a mobile home park where you rent the land but own the home. For this comparison, the tiny home equivalent would be an RV resort where you rent the space for a limited amount of time. In my area, a mobile home park rents for four to 500 per month which usually includes sewer water taxes on the land and snow removal. Let's say the average pattern is $450 per month. If we look at that on a daily basis instead of a monthly basis, it works out to around $15 per day depending on the month. I found an RV resort in my area and the cheapest sites they had were $45 per day, but that does include free Wi-Fi and electricity, which would be extra in the mobile home park. $45 per day works out to $1,350 per month. That place does have lake access, so it's not a direct apples to apples comparison, but in my area, you are going to pay more to park a tiny home on a smaller lot in an RV resort than you would for a single wide in a mobile home park. And the RV resorts are only open from May to September. The next option for a single wide is purchasing a freehold lot. Zoning regulations for this are going to differ from area to area, but where I live, you can put a single wide in town as long as it's 18 feet wide. And as luck would have it, we have access to 18 foot single wides. Yes, there are RV resorts in my area area that you can purchase the lots but just like the rental sites you're limited on how much of the year you can actually use it and if you're looking for a full-time residence that's going to be a problem. 
The next benefit of a single wide is the fact that they're built in a factory. Building a home in a factory has a lot of benefits that I've gone over many, many times on this channel, but one I haven't talked about much that applies today is the fact that they're built in a controlled environment. Manufactured home builders, unless they're a brand new factory, have likely built thousands of homes. They have just a bit of experience and they know what they're doing. I would be very comfortable buying a used manufactured home because as long as it was well cared for, I know when it was originally built built. It was done to a certain standard with systems, processes, and inspections in place to make sure the final product is one that's going to last. What I'm trying to say is you can't build a manufactured home in your backyard. There are some very skilled builders constructing tiny homes in their backyards. My cousins are a perfect example. Their home turned out amazing and some of the tiny homes being built far exceed anything that can be done in manufactured homes. However, the fact that they can be built by anyone with enough time and money to do it is a bit of a concern for me. How do you know for sure what you're getting? I could go buy a set of plans off the internet today and start building a tiny home to sell. Shouldn't it be more regulated than that? Am I missing something? I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that single wides are as cool or have as many bells and whistles as tiny homes, but to me, that's also one of the benefits. I think small single wides can get some of those features while maintaining the benefits of a factory build and staying affordable. Tiny homes are often fully customized, one of one plans that are built to the specific needs of the buyer. Single wides are going to be more cookie cutter because there's only so much the factories are going to be willing to do before it starts to slow down production. By offering less, the builds are less complicated and the factory line runs smoother. This works very well for people who want a smaller footprint home for the affordability and can live without some of the add-ons. They're awesome but not really a necessity. Small single wides and tiny homes can both be great options depending on what exactly you're trying to accomplish by buying one. They both have their own benefits and drawbacks and my goal today was to highlight some of the benefits of a small single wide for people who might be considering a tiny home who hadn't even thought about a manufactured home. Affordable housing is an important topic that we need to keep talking about. We have a chance to repurpose old ideas to solve new problems and I'm excited to see all the ingenuity that will come out of this recent surge in home prices. Prices. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.